So picture this, you're the son of a warmongering king that has absolutely nothing to do with you because you're young and you have no interest in the ways of your barbaric people. You're raised by a kind-hearted man that teaches you to cook, teaches you Christianity in a world of Norse influence, and speaks on your behalf because you simply have no interest at all in your royal status or duties. This man is not your biological father, but he's most certainly your dad. Now when you're sent to the front lines of combat by your father, you're taken hostage and paraded around like an expensive object. Your dad figure is murdered. You turn your back on your god and everything you've previously believed, and you have an awakening like no other character we've seen before. Such is the story of Prince Canute, who had a metamorphosis that's as drastic as that of a caterpillar to a butterfly. Now, let's start at the beginning of his story. Prince Canute was born the son of King Swain, the King of Denmark. Because he was so different than his brother Harold, who aspired to be like his father, Canute was actually raised by Ragnar, a kind-hearted man who took care of him until the day of his death. Ragnar taught the boy to cook, which although is something that a royal should never have to do, Canute greatly enjoyed. This was a very big part of his relationship with Ragnar, and we'll talk about this more later. Also, unlike his royal family, Canute became a Christian and followed the teachings of Christ rather than that of the Norse. He had a very feminine appearance, having soft facial features and long blonde hair and bright blue eyes. When he was just 17, King Swain left Canute with Ragnar on the front lines of the battlefield in London to lead the Danes and try to capture the city. He figured this would be valuable battle experience for the boy, but unfortunately for them, the English were being led by Thorkel, who was actually one of, if not the strongest warrior in the world. He was actually a former member of the Yams Vikings, so he was Danish, but he joined up with the English because he wanted a challenge. Canute's forces, which were led by Ragnar because Canute had absolutely zero desire to fight in this battle, were easily defeated by Thorkel, and Canute and Ragnar were taken hostage as a result. Well, Thorkel keeps him for a while and knowing that Canute is a Christian, mocks Christianity in front of him, but Canute never says a word. The remainder of Canute's men that weren't captured confront Thorkel now and demand that he hand back over the prince. He agrees to do this if they'll fight him, but as soon as the battle breaks out, Askeladd and his men set fire to the entire forest in which the battle is taking place. This creates a giant smoke screen and Askeladd sends in Thorfinn on a horse to retrieve Canute because he figured that King Swain would pay a hefty price for the return of his son. Canute, Ragnar, and the Christian priest Willibald now escape with Thorfinn and the metamorphosis of Canute truly begins. Prince Canute's time with Askeladd began by the man asking him to to remove his helmet so that he could look him in the face. As we know, Askeladd has the ability to see a man's true character by looking them in the face. So when Askeladd says that Canute has no face of a king, we truly see where Canute is in his life. He's just a boy forced into the world of fighting and onto the front lines by his unfortunate birth which Askeladd also had himself. Askeladd's men and Canute are now on the run from Thorkel's men, and they end up traveling by boat to Askeladd's homeland of Wales, where they're guaranteed safe passage. They shake Thorkel for the time being, but the Welsh had one request of Canute. They demand that he sign a pact of non-aggression with the Welsh people. Canute, who's still scared of his own shadow, refuses to talk to the Welsh people or even look in their direction. He instead whispers to Ragnar, who relays the message, that if they would agree to give them three ships to use on their journey, he would agree to the deal. The Welshman refuses to accept this until Canute himself speaks up and signs the deal, and then they're all ambushed by another group of Welsh people. Canute once again cowers down behind Ragnar, unable to speak for himself. Askeladd wants Canute to grow up and to actually speak to these people. Ragnar fiercely defends Canute to Askeladd now, telling the story of how the royal court in which Canute was born was full of bloodshed and connivory and assassinations, and so Canute tailored his entire personality to be be quiet and not attract attention to himself, ever. Now Askeladd has to go negotiate on their behalf with the Welsh, and Thorfinn, the assigned bodyguard of Canute, mentions how worthless and pathetic Canute really is and can't believe that the two are the same age. Now I do feel bad for Canute here because I know what it's like to be shy. I was shy until the last three years of my life, but he really does take it a bit too far here. Askeladd reveals to the Welsh now that he has a plan to use Canute to gain the throne of Denmark, and as Canute's loyal retainer, he'll have the power to influence the affairs of the country for years to come. This will allow him to to protect his mother's land of Wales. After this confrontation, they all continue their journey, and Thorfinn agitates Canute to the point where he actually speaks to him. Canute explains that he doesn't speak much because the weight of his words is pretty great as he is a royal. He now goes off on Thorfinn about how he's been treating him, and the two continue to talk for quite some time while all the members of Askeladd's party, including Ragnar himself, are completely shocked to hear the prince's voice. Ragnar was especially shocked because he says that he never thought he'd hear the prince speak to anybody but himself, but he's very proud of him even if it was just an argument with Thorfinn. Canute eventually 
signs the peace treaty with Wales, and then they all sail back over to the mainland to continue their march to King's Wing. During their march, Askeladd and his men are forced to round up and kill an entire village of people in order to have enough food and supplies to last during their march. Canute ignores this horrible but necessary act and later prays with Ragnar and the priest. The priest is leading the prayer, and he says in his prayer that he doubts God's love. Canute commands him to stop now, questioning how he can even call himself a Christian if he doubts the father's love. He storms off now, followed by Ragnar, and they're not seen again until Thorfinn kills a rabbit and Ragnar offers to cook it in his stew. Thorfinn enters the house and is surprised to see Canute was the one cooking the stew himself. Canute tells him the story of how he learned to cook with Ragnar and how he really enjoyed it as a kid. He one day cooked a meal of fish for his father, and he presented it to him because he was very proud of himself. King Swain threw it down and ridiculed him, saying that cooking was a slave slaves work and he should never do it again. From that point forward, Canute only cooked in private, presumably around Ragnar, and Thorfinn could never tell a soul that he was a cook. Now a messenger arrives at their house, telling them that Askeladd's men had been surrounded and found by the English, and Ragnar goes to investigate. He is then ambushed and killed by Askeladd's men, but not before he could talk to Askeladd one more time. He tells Askeladd that now he has to take care of him no matter what, because Ragnar himself wouldn't be there to do it. Ragnar also tells him that King Swain is Canute's true enemy. The king sent Canute out on on the front lines in England to die. See, the future of Denmark will be complicated and split if Prince Canute and his brother Harold both claim the throne. Then, Ragnar dies. Askeladd brings the news of Ragnar's death to Canute now, saying that he died in battle against the English. Canute is astonished and in complete disbelief. He throws a fit, and then Askeladd does the unthinkable. He slaps Prince Canute in the face. He says that Ragnar's dead, and there's no point in screaming for him because he wouldn't come no matter what. Although Canute certainly doesn't see it this way yet, this establishes Askeladd as yet another guiding figure for the boy to follow. Now actually being caught by Thorkell, Askeladd's men turn on him. They wish for him to turn over Canute to Thorkell so that he'll save their lives. Every one of them do this but Bjorn and Thorfinn, and he sends these two ahead to protect Canute and the priest. Bjorn's sled carrying the priest and Canute crashes, and then he's forced to eat a berserker mushroom to fight off Canute's attackers. Canute's knocked out at the start of the battle when he falls off the sled, and Ragnar now visits him in his dreams to say goodbye. Canute confesses in this dream that he really wishes he was born the son of Ragnar, not a royal prince, and then the two say their goodbyes. Ragnar was finally out of Canute's life for good, and he truly begins to awaken as his own man. He wakes up in experiences Bjorn's fight with the ten men chasing them and then the priest speaks to him. The priest begins talking philosophically about love and how nobody truly understands what love is. He explains to Canute that the true nature of love is death and that what man conceives to be love such as Ragnar's love for Canute, a husband and wife's bond, or a father's love for their child is nothing more than prejudice. This is evidenced by the way that Ragnar cared for Canute more than he cared for his own life. He watched dozens of villagers get slaughtered out of prejudice for Canute and his safety. Canute understands now what love is. He contemplates the beauty of the world and how God created it, and how there's no true love in the hearts of man. Canute learns that the banishment of man from paradise, all the way back in the day when Eve ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, led to this void of no love in the hearts of man. Canute is in the midst of his metamorphosis now. He sees the barbaric nature of Bjorn fighting with the berserker mushroom, the lack of knowledge of life, death, or love, and he exclaims that he's tired of this. Canute genuinely grows angry at his God. He explains that we cannot truly understand any of these concepts, yet God wants us to strive towards all of them. He says that the trials of God cannot bring these troubled souls redemption. Prince Canute decides then and there that he would no longer rely on his God to bring him salvation. He will recreate paradise on earth himself. Canute wakes up now from his sheltered nature and his past and becomes a man truly worthy of leading the Danes. He orders Bjorn and the men to cease their fighting and then heads back to Askeladd and Thorfinn and Thorkell and tells them to do the same. He demands respect when he gets to the scene, and when it's all said and done, Thorkell, Thorfinn, and Askeladd all join him as his retainers as they return to his father King Swain in Gainsborough. When they return to the king, Swain realizes that his son is a totally different person than before. This was obviously due to the death of Ragnar and the acquisition of Askeladd as a retainer, and this puts a target on Canute's Back. As they enter a city in England later on where King Swain is stationed, the sin is brewed when Askeladd stages an assassination attempt on Canute. He does this to implicate Swain as the culprit in the public's eye, and these political machinations make him a target of the royal court. Askeladd does well in this political sphere until Swain realizes that his two weaknesses are Wales and Canute. Swain attempts to make him choose between the two, and Swain is beheaded right on the spot by Askeladd as a result. 
Canute understands that Askeladd made the only decision he could to protect both Canute and Wales, and he realizes that because Askeladd was his retainer, it's his responsibility to put him down. Canute stabs Askeladd, killing him, and this wins him favor in the eyes of the Danish people for years to come. This completed his transformation, as now he was his own man. He didn't have Ragnar, Askeladd, or his father to hold him back. He's on his own now, and we see that he's successful in this endeavor in season two of the anime. In episode five of season two, which recently came out, Canute is shown to be the king of the Danish and the English. He's out on the battlefield checking things out in his realm. He's fighting another that claims to be the King of England, Ethelred II, and he makes a deal with the Earl of Mercia to betray and murder this king. That king dies of a mysterious illness, likely poison, and his son who succeeded him, Edmund, also dies not long after his installation. Canute is officially installed as the King of England, and now he plans to move on with his plan of making paradise on Earth. I hope you've enjoyed hearing the story and transformation of the shy and measly Prince Canute into the fierce King Canute of the present. Remember to subscribe to the channel and check out the video linked on screen for more. I really think if you like this video, you'll love my cover of Askeladd's story as well. Also, Canute's is awesome and inspiring figure in Vinland Saga now. Thorfinn is a slave on a farm. What a role reversal.